my uh, purpose in this video is to explain to you the basics uh, of uh, flash uh, memory operation how the device works and how you can uh, program and erase a flash memory cell so the first thing i want to do is to compare the flash memory to a transistor device so if you look at the flash memory cell or drawn over here is a uh, is a is a cross section of your flash memory cell and drawn over here is the cross section of a uh, normal uh, transistor so if you compare uh, your flash memory cell to your transistor it looks uh, very similar you know the uh, normal transistor has a source and a drain and a gate electrode similarly uh, it uh, has a source and a drain and a gate electrode uh, this one has a gate uh, oxide this one also has a gate oxide the only different uh, thing or the only extra element in a flash memory cell is you have this extra gate which is you know typically a polysilicon gate you have this extra gate which is uh, called uh, the floating uh, gate and the reason why it's uh, called uh, floating is because there's no direct access to this gate so if you think about it you know there's always a terminal which connects to your source and drain and your gate and you can directly apply a voltage to it but as compared to that this floating gate there's no direct electrical contact uh, available to this uh, floating gate also it's uh, it's surrounded by this um, this uh, oxide uh, material which is uh, supposed to be uh, insulating so there's no way there could be a leakage path uh, between uh, my floating gate and my or uh, and my source or my drain or my uh, control gate so that's why this this uh, electrode is called as the floating uh, floating electrode or the floating uh, gate but besides that uh, these two devices uh, look uh, pretty much uh, the same so uh, if uh, if you remember from uh, your uh, your uh, basics uh, device physics of uh, course and I want to borrow an equation from there to explain the principle of operation of this uh, flash memory device. So if you remember from your uh, basic uh, device uh, physics uh, course, if you have a MOS capacitor and you have some uh, charge which is uh, trapped uh, inside the MOS capacitor, the threshold dependence uh, is essentially of that MOS capacitor is given by this uh, simple formula. So your threshold voltage is your uh, is your uh, essentially the, um, uh, the these are the normal terms and this is the extra term which comes because of this uh, trap charge. So suppose there was a amount of charge Q which was uh, trapped uh, inside at a distance uh, of uh, dt away from my gate the the change in the threshold voltage is given by simply this uh, vt is uh, is dependent on qt uh, by uh, proportional to how far away is from there and depending upon the dielectric constant of uh, this uh, oxide and you know i can uh, rearrange this term such that e over dt is essentially nothing but the capacitance this uh, capacitance uh, between um, the gate and this uh, trap charge and this threshold voltage is essentially uh, given by uh, this uh, normal terms and this QT divided by this capacitance coupling between my uh, gate and this trap charge. So if you if you carry that uh, same uh, analogy over here, you can essentially. Uh, apply uh, the same reasoning that uh, essentially this floating gate is nothing but a layer to uh, trap uh, this uh, charge and uh, depending upon uh, whether I have uh, some uh, charge uh, trapped over here or not my uh, threshold voltage would essentially uh, just be dependent on that uh, trap charge by this formula where I'll have a shift in my threshold voltage depending upon whether I have some charge over there or not and this shift would be given by just this delta Vt dependent upon uh, this uh, changed uh, in the charge in the floating gate and divided by this uh, capacitive coupling and that is in fact the case so I'm borrowing this uh, from a paper and uh, it uh, it shows that essentially if, if you have uh, no charge uh, in your uh, trapped uh, in your uh, floating gate so this would be the floating gate uh, over here 
and uh, if you have uh, no charge uh, trapped uh, in your floating gate your electrons can very easily flow from uh, hair to hair uh, and uh, so you get uh, you get essentially um, uh, if you have no charge uh, stored you when you apply a drain uh, you apply a gate voltage your device turns on early and uh, so suppose you're reading at a particular voltage of vr you get a high current at that uh, voltage and then what happens is if you apply uh, if you have charge stored in your uh, floating gate if your floating gate is now uh, is full of electron it hinders this channel from turning on and it uh, it prevents these uh, electrons uh, from flowing from hair to hair unless you apply a high gate voltage which uh, overcomes this effect of uh, this uh, floating gate charge but the thrift in the threshold voltage the delta vt is essentially given by uh, the amount of charge that you have uh, in this uh, floating gate divided by this uh, capacitive coupling between my floating gate uh, and my uh, my top gate or which is also known as the control gate so uh, this uh, is essentially uh, so as you can see over here if you have charge trapped over here and you apply uh, read voltage this uh, you won't get any uh, current so the threshold voltage has shifted to a higher value and you won't be able to uh, read any current at that particular voltage and you can say that you know the the the, the device is in a high vt state Hence the threshold voltage of my transistor is affected by the amount of charge stored in this floating gate by this simple governing equation. So to understand how the program and arrays behavior of this floating gate device, it's very important to understand two things. One is the capacitive coupling and the other one is, is the tunneling phenomena. So let's start by first with the understanding the capacitive coupling so I can relate the amount of uh, charge into this uh, floating gate by these uh, to these uh, different other terminals that is my source electrode my drain electrode my uh, gate electrode by simply writing uh, Q equal to CV or simply writing down the Maxwell uh, equation so what I can uh, write down is uh, my uh, charge in the floating gate is essentially um, is related to these uh, different uh, voltages at my uh, source drain and uh, control uh, gate by and my uh, body uh, by this uh, these uh, capacitive uh, coupling and then I'm, I'm assuming in this case that my source is uh, always as a potential zero and my drain is at a potential uh, VD, my uh, channel or my body is also, it's also at a potential of zero. And my gate electrode, my control gate electrode has a potential of uh, VG. So what I can do is write down this Q equal to CV formula. And this Q in my floating gate is essentially related to this uh, uh, gate uh, gate voltage by this uh, capacitive coupling between my control gate and my floating gate it's uh, related to my source potential by this uh, cs capacitor and it's related to my body potential by this uh, uh, by this uh, body uh, or channel capacitance it's also related to this uh, drain voltage by essentially the capacitive coupling uh, between the gate and then i can rearrange this such that i collect all the terms uh, which have the floating gate potential and i collect all the terms which have my uh, gate potential and i collect all the terms which have my drain potential so if i do that then essentially i can rewrite this equation as this q in my floating gate is related to this uh, voltage in the floating gate by these uh, so here all these capacitances add up and i can uh, uh, call the different total of these capacitance i can label this as uh, ct so let me simplify this uh, further and i want to, what i want to do is i want to rearrange this equation again so that i can relate this uh, 
uh, potential on my floating gate to the charge on the floating gate and these voltage on the control gate and the drain voltage so what I do is I take all of these uh, terms on the other side and I can rearrange it such that my uh, floating gate potential is now related to my uh, the potential I apply on my control gate and it's related by uh, this uh, proportionality factor which is uh, the ratio of the capacitive coupling with my control gate divided by this total capacitor and it's also related to by uh, the, my uh, drain potential by this uh, capacitance with the drain divided by the total capacitance and it's related to the charge on the floating gate by this uh, charge on the floating gate divided by this total capacitance so this uh, again is a very very important formula L let me put it uh, in a box and one of the key terms in this formula is this uh, capacitive uh, is the ratio of this uh, capacitance uh, between uh, my uh, control gate and my uh, total capacitance it's also known as uh, the gate uh, coupling uh, ratio and you uh, want to traditionally uh, want to keep this as high as uh, possible a general rule of thumb is that you want to at least keep it uh, more than uh, 0.6 so a gate coupling ratio of 0.6 means that uh, assuming that you know i have uh, my other terms uh, my drain potential is zero and my charge to start with is uh, zero so those terms vanish so my floating gate uh, potential is essentially just related to my uh, control gate potential by this uh, gate coupling ratio and if i have a gate coupling ratio of 0.6 that means if i apply a 10 volt of voltage here it translates to uh, 6 volts on my floating gate so if I want uh, a, a more efficient programming or faster programming, what you need is, is essentially a high uh, gate uh, coupling uh, ratio. So the next thing which is uh, really important to understand uh, the operation of uh, flash uh, memory is this uh, concept uh, of uh, tunneling. And uh, tunneling is essentially, uh, you can, uh, there are three different uh, regimes uh, of uh, tunneling. One is that uh, when you have essentially no, uh, no potential difference uh, between uh, your uh, between your uh, substrate and your gate. So shown here is this band diagram, which is uh, of a mass uh, capacitor. So you have a, a silicon uh, substrate here, and you have a gate uh, over here, and. Uh, uh, when you have no potential, uh, when you don't have any electric field, there is essentially uh, uh, there is uh, no uh, tunneling uh, current, and uh, then you have two different uh, regimes. One is that of a very high gate uh, potential. So when you apply a gate uh, potential which is uh, uh, very high, you get this uh, regime known as the uh, Fowler. Norden uh, tunneling also known as the uh, field emission and uh, in that case your electrons which are uh, tunneling uh, from your substrate to your gate they essentially see this barrier uh, for tunneling which is in the face uh, in the shape uh, of a triangle and they see uh, this barrier and they can tunnel through it and it's called a Fowler Norden uh, tunneling the regime in between that is in between no tunneling and this uh, fowler northern uh, tunneling is is the regime known as uh, direct tunneling so in a direct uh, tunneling your uh, your potential is somewhere between uh, zero volt uh, but not as high as your uh, fowler northern uh, tunneling uh, voltage and in that case your uh, carriers which are tunneling uh, from your uh, from your substrate to your gate they see this uh, again this uh, potential barrier uh, for uh, tunneling but this barrier is now trapezoidal uh, in uh, case uh, tin shapes 